eight officers and 22 crewmen boarded the British anti-submarine dirigible R-34 and lifted off from East Fortune Airship Station early on July 2nd, 1919. Loaded with some 16 tonnes of fuel, the ship was kept at lift-saving altitude. Following the route of the Clyde Canal, she passed east of Inchannon, where the airship had been built by William Beardmores and Sons. By daylight, the R-34 passed over the Instrahull Isle off Malin Head, heading out to cross the Atlantic. Radio contact had been with a number of ships that were not seen. About halfway across, Commanding Officer Major George Scott was informed that a stowaway had been found. AC-2 WW Ballantyne had come down from hiding when leaking hydrogen had made him sick. Just before midnight, radio contact was made with Newfoundland, and weather information received. The airship was then taken to 3,400 feet, where she was in clear sky, flying smoothly but using more fuel than expected, combating headwinds. About 1pm on July 4th, the airship crossed the coast of Newfoundland. R-34's officers radioed the US Navy at Chatham, Massachusetts, to set aside 50,000 cubic feet of hydrogen and 500 gallons of gasoline. About 4pm, they sighted Chatham, but more favourable winds allowed the airship to press on, arriving at Hazelhurst Field, Long Island, with only 140 gallons of gasoline remaining. Major J.E.M. Pritchard volunteered to parachute down to give directions to the landing crew, making him the first transatlantic air traveller to land in America. U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander Zachary Lansdowne stepped off, therefore becoming the first American to fly the Atlantic. The elapsed time from East Fortune had been 108 hours and 12 minutes. R-34 was greeted by a large crowd of sightseers and officials. The US Army and Navy personnel took over the watchkeeping as the airship was moored to concrete anchors using the three-wire system. Officers were guests at a dinner party put on by the Navy at the Garden City Hotel and housed at the Ritz-Carlton, courtesy of the American Aero Club. New York's weather alternatively made the airship heavy or light, causing some damage as she was fueled with gasoline, pumped up with hydrogen and loaded with supplies. The weather allowed the crew to lift off for home at noon on the 9th of July, also carrying US Army Colonel William Hensley. Course was set for New York City, and despite the hour, many people could be seen gazing up at the airship. With a good tailwind, a ground speed of about 78 miles per hour was maintained. The weather was fine on this first day, and by evening, the R-34 had covered about a third of the way to the Irish coast. The following morning, the forward engine in the rear gondola broke down, so the remainder of the journey was accomplished on only four engines. The Air Ministry advised of an anticyclone southwest of Ireland, so course was altered slightly to the north to take advantage of a westerly wind on that side of it. The next day, the Air Ministry signalled for Scott to land at Pullum Airship Station in Norfolk instead of East Fortune, which meant that none of the families of the crew members would be on hand to welcome them home. R-34 arrived at Pullum, and the landing was made at 6.57am. Total elapsed time for the eastward voyage was 75 hours and 3 minutes. With their R-34, they had become the first airmen to cross from east to west, and the first to complete a round trip. All Cock and Brown had crash-landed in an Irish bog a few weeks earlier, and only half of the distance across, and with the wind. They had been given knighthoods. The R-34's crew were instead given minor awards, and they have all been but forgotten to history. History.